Welcome back to Two Sisters and a TV, the classic TV podcast where we discuss and remember and reflect upon everything classic TV, everything and all things classic TV. Today, we want to to take a look at the TV show Hazel, which ran for five seasons, both on NBC and then CBS. Hazel, of course, comes originally or came originally from the character within the Saturday Evening Post. Ted Key was the creator of Hazel. And the character was so popular within the Saturday Evening Post that NBC decided to develop a TV show for the character. Hazel, of course, portrayed by Shirley Booth, who was an Academy Award winning actress, had a career on the stage. She was definitely a very seasoned, accomplished actress prior to Hazel's inception. She portrayed the role of Hazel Burke. Now, the basic summary and premise of, about the premise of Hazel is Hazel works for the Baxter family. George Baxter is, is a successful attorney. There is his wife, Dorothy, and their little boy, Harold. Now, although uh, George, or as Hazel calls him, Mr. B, is the head of the house, the head of the family, in actuality, Hazel is the one who's running things. Hazel's the one who actually has the last say in a lot of what goes on within the Baxter house. Hazel has a really good heart, but sometimes she can go overboard when it comes to other people's lives and situations, relationships. Hazel's always butting into somebody else's business. I mean, she she means well and she's genuine. She's very sincere, but she can really be very passionate when she gets involved in a situation. Doesn't matter if it's something in regard to the Baxters or something in regard to the you know, friends of hers or the neighbors or one of the relatives of the Baxters. It it doesn't matter. Hazel is very outspoken. She's very defiant. She has a lot of guts. She's very passionate, as I said. And when you get Hazel going in any type of a situation, there's no stopping her until the situation has been resolved. That's really what kept the show so entertaining for all of those years because you just didn't know what Hazel was going to do next. She was always doing something. And the way that she was always running around the Baxter house and her dedication and loyalty and love for the Baxters definitely was like I said, despite the fact that she would definitely get on George's nerves in particular, because George was always really frustrated with Hazel. He was very exasperated with her all the time, annoyed by her, irritated with her. But he did, at the, you know, at the end of the day, he did care for Hazel, and of course, she cared for him as well. And of course, um, I think that no one else could have portrayed the character of Hazel except for Shirley Booth. She was the ideal actress to portray that character. So anyway, Hazel made its debut in the fall of 1961 over on NBC. The very first season was in black and white. There was only one color episode. I think it was the last episode of the season. Either the Baxters or Hazel, one of the two, wanted to buy a color television. So naturally, it made sense that the episode would be in color. Hazel, a top 10 show in its first season, very successful, very popular, very funny. Now, there are a lot of people out there, well, I won't say a lot, but there are some people out there who find the character of Hazel to be annoying because Hazel sometimes didn't have the most respect for Mr. B. Honestly, sometimes she would just go too far and she would kind of... You know, she always meant well. That's the thing. She had a good heart. She had a heart of gold. But in her shenanigans, sometimes she did really make George kind of look like a fool. And, you know, some people consider the fact that she, you know, she was disrespectful to her boss, the head of the house, head of the family. And so they find Hazel annoying. And I will say that if you watch an episode of Hazel, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to really, really like it or you're not going to like it at all. It's one of, it's, that's the kind of show that Hazel is. It's one of those TV shows where some TV shows you need to see maybe a couple of episodes to make a decision. But Hazel, 
you only need to see once because that's just how the character was written to where either you're going to be a fan of Hazel and you're going to like it or you're not going to like it at all. Now, I first started watching Hazel probably in the 80s mid-80s when I was a teenager. Hazel didn't come on a lot when I was a kid, but it was coming on briefly around maybe 1985, 86. And I liked Hazel. I liked the show. I thought she was really funny. And so I, and of course, Hazel still comes on today. It comes on Antenna TV uh, in the mornings, Monday through Friday. They show two episodes back to back, 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 Central. The entire series is available on DVD, if I'm not mistaken. So you you can still check out Hazel and, you know, all of her shenanigans. Now, the thing that I find the most frustrating about Hazel from a personal standpoint is that watching the show always makes me hungry. It always induces hunger because Hazel was an amazing, phenomenal cook. Hazel could cook anything anything and she did all the time. There was an episode I saw several weeks back one morning where Hazel had made, I believe, roasted chicken, either roasted chicken or fried chicken, along with homemade French um homemade uh French fried potatoes and uh biscuits with butter and honey and I was just kinda like, will y'all just please shut that up? You're making me so hungry right now. It's ridiculous. So usually when I watch Hazel, I either have to be preparing to cook or I'm eating at the moment while I'm watching the show or I've already eaten. Because I mean the way that they talk about food on that show and what Hazel was cooking, you know, roast, pot roast, pork chops uh, ham and bacon and eggs and beef stroganoff and turkey and dressing, hamburgers, spaghetti. I mean, you name it, Hazel was making it. And I won't say that in every episode, Hazel, uh, they were talking about what Hazel was making for dinner or what she was going to cook or what she had cooked the night before or what she cooked for breakfast. But in, I would say, literally every other episode, Hazel's culinary skills were definitely mentioned. So that's my main complaint about the show. But anyway, um, just want to take a quick, uh, before I forget, I just want to take a quick look at Whitney Blake, who portrayed George's wife, Dorothy, or as Hazel affectionately called her, Missy. Because Hazel actually worked for Missy's family when Missy was growing up. When Missy married George... Hazel began to work for them. So Hazel basically knew Missy as a kid and watched her grow up. Um, Whitney Blake, first and foremost, was very different. The character of Missy was very different from any of the other characters, uh, wives that you saw on TV in the early 60s. Because Missy was an interior decorator. She had her own business. She didn't, you know, work for another company. She had her own business and she had her own clientele. She was at the same time still a very good wife and a good mother, but her life and existence didn't solely revolve around being a wife and a mother. She was also very much involved within her career. So I have a lot of respect for the show Hazel based upon that alone, the fact that Dorothy or Missy was a career woman. You didn't see that very often in those days on TV. So I have mad respect for Hazel based upon that alone. Whitney Blake also would go on to co-create the sitcom One Day at a Time, which ran for nine years on CBS. Whitney Blake and her husband, at the time Alan Mannings, created the show, developed it, pitched it to Norman Lear, And, of course, it had a very successful run on CBS, as I said, from 1975 to 1984. The show was based upon Whitney Blake's life as a divorced single mother because, of course, Whitney Blake, the mom of the actress Meredith Baxter, or as some still call her, Meredith Baxter Bernie. We all know Meredith Baxter from her roles in Bridget Loves Bernie, Family, and Family Ties. Well, she was the mom not only to Meredith, but also to Meredith's brothers. I believe that Meredith 
uh, had two or has two older brothers and that she was the youngest, if I'm not mistaken. So she was the single mom to these three kids. And that's how the premise of One Day at a Time came into being. Now, she wanted to star in One Day at a Time. She wanted to star in the show along with her real-life daughter, Meredith. However, not sure if it was Norman Lear's idea or the network's, but they said that she was too old for the part. They wanted someone younger to portray the single, the divorced single mom. And they wanted the daughters, the kids, to be teenagers. Well, Meredith was in her 20s by that point, married with a couple of kids of her own. So they wanted to have a younger cast. So that's how you got Bonnie Franklin as Anne Romano, and then you had Mackenzie Phillips and Valerie Bertinelli as Julie and Barbara Cooper. But the original thing that she wanted to do was to star in the show herself. And also speaking of Whitley, Whitney Blake, uh, I found this out, I would say, less than 10 years ago. Whitney Houston, of course, the phenomenal singer, was named after Whitney Blake. Of course, Whitney Houston, born in 1963, right smack dab in the middle of the run of Hazel. It's, I think it's really, uh, really sweet, really cute that Whitney Houston's parents decided to, evidently they watched Hazel and they decided to name their daughter after Missy, after, you know, Whitney Blake. I, I think that was really, you know, that's really cute. I think that that is very endearing at the same time. So I wanted to, you know, mention those things, you know, before I went any further within this episode. So Hazel, of course, again, very successful show. Uh, Shirley Booth won two Emmy Awards for portrayal of Hazel Burke. The show was definitely a staple over on the NBC network. It did very well. It uh, continued to, you know, have a steady audience. And, of course, you know, you, you, you like watching Hazel, wondering what she was going to do next. You know, of course, the Baxters, you know, like I said, George was pretty stuffy, to be honest. He was pretty conceited in a way, but at the end of the day, he was still, you know, a good husband, a good father, and he was a good lawyer, and he was definitely, you know, good to Hazel. Of course, like I said, Missy, the career woman, good mom, good uh, wife. She and Hazel are very, very close. And of course, Harold, you know, the typical perfect little boy. And of course, there was his dog, Smiley. Harold, your typical, you know, cute little blonde boy. You know, he and Hazel are very, very close. She called him sport. And so that's basically, you know, what Hazel was about. By 1965, however, NBC, not sure where they got their idea for this decision, NBC decided to cancel Hazel. Not sure why that was. Maybe, and this is just speculation on my part, maybe it was because they were a little bit caught up in the fact that they were airing the number one show in the country, which was Bonanza. Uh, Of course, they had other programming on their network, like The Man from UNCLE. So maybe, I don't, I'm not, again, I know the ratings did dip a little bit for Hazel, but I don't think that they dipped to the point where it warranted cancellation. I might be wrong, maybe the ratings did drop just that much, but I kind of have a feeling that it didn't go quite that far. But anyway, they decided to bring Hazel to a close after four seasons. They figured that it, it run its course. However, CBS decided to pick the show up, contingent upon a couple of things. For CBS to pick up Hazel, they demanded that there be some significant cast changes within the show. Basically, CBS was trying to appeal to a younger demographic. So CBS decided that Don DeFore, who portrayed Mr. B., and Whitney Blake, they were out of the show. They were fired from the show. They were going to be replaced by younger actors. So all of a sudden, you have two brand new actors on Hazel. You have, I believe his name, I know his first name was Ray. I think his last name was Fullman. Ray Fullman joined the show, as did Lynn Borden. And then also portraying their daughter, Julia Benjamin. So here's how it all played out. 
George gets this really top-notch assignment, I believe, in Saudi Arabia. Anyway, they are, if it, if it was not Saudi Arabia, it was definitely another country. So George and Missy leave town. They decide to leave town. I believe they sold their house. And they don't take Harold with them because they don't want to uproot him. They want Harold to stay in school. And they don't want him to leave his friends. So just the two of them go off together. They're gone indefinitely, if I'm not mistaken. There was not any kind of a timetable when they would be returning. But I do, if I remember correctly, they did sell their house. So Hazel... Basically, well, where is she going to go? She's been with George and, and, and Missy for all this time. What's going to happen to her? And what about Harold? I mean, where is her son going to live? Well, all of a sudden, it's been revealed that George has a younger brother. Now, mind you, the show's been on. Hazel's been on for four years. We haven't heard a thing about George having any brother. All we know about George is that he has that really snooty, stuck-up, arrogant sister, Deidre. I never liked Deidre. I still don't like Deidre. I believe the actress who portrayed her was Kathy Lewis, but I detest it and still do to this day, Deidre. There was an episode on a few days ago, and if I'm not mistaken, Deidre was trying to plan some kind of pageant with Missy, and, you know, Missy was suggested that Hazel sing in the pageant, and Deidre was like, oh, well, she's just a maid. She's not good as us, and, you know, as good as we are, blah, blah, blah. I turned off. I had to go out anyway. It's some errands to run. So I, I was too happy to turn off the episode, turn the TV off, because, you know, I, I, I hated Deidre. I hate to use the word hate, but I did not like that lady. Um, but that's the only sibling that we heard about George having during the run of the show. All of a sudden, George has a younger brother named Steve. Steve is in the real estate industry, in the real estate business, and he has a pretty young wife named Barbara. Barbara, really pretty blonde, you know, a lot like Missy, only younger, and they have a little girl named Susie. Well, that is where Hazel and Harold end up. They move in with Steve and Barbara and Susie. So Hazel is taking care of them, and she's butting into their business and their lives and helping Steve, you know, score real estate deals. And she's irritating Steve. And Steve isn't as stuffy as uh, George. You know, Steve is, you know, kind of more chill. But he, too, gets frustrated with Hazel and how she butts into, you know, his business and butts into relationships and situations. She butts in where she doesn't belong, and she gets too caught up in it. So he gets irritated by it, too, just like, you know, George did. But, again, Steve, a little bit more, a little bit more down to earth than what George was. So, anyway, you have Hazel, like I said. She's with, like I said, Barbara, and she's with Steve. Barbara, if I recall correctly unlike missy she's a stay-at-home mom and you know she's basically um her whole world is about taking care of you know steve and Susie, and then you know harold of course now that harold is living with them you know her nephew there's an episode early on in the 1965-66 season where barbara is really having a hard time with hazel being there she feels left out because hazel's doing everything Hazel is taking care of everything that Barbara used to take care of. And Barbara feels left out that she has no purpose. She is not needed. And that basically her role within the family is obsolete. Of course, Hazel picks up on this and she talks to her and they work it out. And of course, you know, it's smooth sailing from then on. Barbara never has any more issues with Hazel. And, you know, they end up becoming very close, just like, you know, Missy and Hazel were close. Well, Barbara and Hazel were close just the same way. Now, when I first started watching Hazel over on Antenna TV, probably about, I'd say, six, seven years ago, I had never seen this, uh, the CBS season of Hazel. I'd never seen it. I'd only seen the Mr. B and Missy years of Hazel because I never had seen Hazel a whole lot anyway, just, you know, from time to time. But I had heard about the cast change, but I'd never, you know, seen those episodes. So, when I read that they were getting down to the to that particular season when Harold and Hazel move in with George's younger brother, Steve, I was like, uh oh, I don't think I'm going to like these episodes very much. I don't think I'm gonna like this. But I was wrong. 
I was very wrong. I liked Barbara and Steve and Susie. I really grew to like them a lot. I liked them pretty much the same way as I did George and, um, uh, you know, Dorothy or Mr. B and Missy, you know, um, I liked Barbara and Steve and Susie and Susie, of course, um, kind of, you know, looked up to Harold because Harold was older. Harold, of course, was, you know, kind of getting toward that uh, late elementary school, early middle school period. One episode, so, uh, one episode showed him in a band. And, you know, Susie was, of course, you know, she definitely, you know, very fond of Harold. Harold, very fond of her. They had a great relationship. They were more like brother and sister than cousins. And, of course, like I said, Susie looked up to Harold. And, of course, you know, when they started the band, you know, she was like one of their biggest fans and kind of like a little groupie in a way. But I liked, um, you know, I, I, I liked all of them. I liked that CBS season of Hazel. And the ratings were not that bad. Now, some people have put it out there that the ratings weren't good. But from what I've read, the ratings were good enough to where CBS was going to renew it for the 1966-1967 season. However, by that point, Shirley Booth was really in poor health. She had some serious health issues. I believe amongst them was a severe case of rheumatism. And so she was not going to be able to do the show any longer. According to Lynn Borden, they were at the end of the 1965-66 season and Shirley Booth pretty much called everyone together, all the cast, all the crew, and she told them that she, she was not physically able to work on the show anymore and that the show was going to have to come to an end. And everyone was crying Everyone was just, you know, really heartbroken and everyone was just crying and hugging and everyone was just really upset. So it's not like the show just ended without any kind of warning. Shirley Booth actually t let everyone know what was going on and why. And you know, that was a very, very thoughtful, considerate thing that she did to tell everyone the sh that the show was going to have to end and why. She didn't let it just, everyone just be blindsided. She had um, the courage and the respect of her cast members, as well as everyone else who worked on the show, to let them know what was happening. So as a result of the fact that she could physically no longer do the show and meet the demands of a, working on a weekly series, Hazel ended in 1966. Hazel, of course, one of my favorite TV shows I, I enjoy watching it. I watch it whenever I get the chance to. Again, I always make sure I at least have some snacks nearby when I do. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm very fond of Hazel. I'm very fond of the character of Hazel. I'm very fond of all of the characters on the show. Sadly, just about everyone from the cast of Hazel has passed away. The only remaining surviving cast members are Ray Fulmer. And again, if I have gotten his name incorrect, I apologize for that. And of course, Julia Benjamin, who portrayed Susie. Everyone else has passed away. Hazel, um, I'm trying to say, um, Hazel herself, Shirley Booth, passed away in the 90s, as did Don DeFore. Um, Whitney Blake passed away in the early 2000s. Bobby Buntrock, actually, sadly. Uh, Lynn Borden passed away a couple of years ago. But Bobby Buntrock, who portrayed Harold, was actually the first cast member to pass away. He passed away before anyone else did. In 1974, if I'm not mistaken, 1973 or 74, he was in a serious car accident. Uh, the details, I can't remember specifically. He was driving along, and I believe the Jeep that he was driving flipped over. And he ended up in a like a body of water and he couldn't get out of the jeep and he drowned he was only 19 years old i believe he was very young when this happened and very saddened to hear that he died so young died so tragically saddened by the passings of everyone within the cast of hazel because the cast whether you know we're talking about george and and, and missy or you're talking about barbara and steve the cast is really very good and there was a great chemistry amongst all of the cast, all of the players. 
And I, of course, me with my mind always wondering, I, you know, it would have been nice to have seen how it would have been to see George and Steve together, Missy and Barbara, and how it would have been had, you know, they all been, you know, at least an episode together. But of course, realistically, I'm sure that was not going to happen considering the fact that, you know, um, Don DeFore and Whitney Blake were fired. They were unceremoniously and suddenly fired from the show. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they, uh, I believe Don DeFore said that he read about his firing, that he wasn't even contacted. I might have that wrong. You know, sometimes people put stuff out there that's not true. We pick up on it and, you know, we repeat it. So, but I do know that they were unceremoniously dropped from the show. That, that, that remains a fact. That's factual. So I don't see them having come back to work with their replacements, you know. But of course, you know, I, I can't help but wonder that in my head how that would have been an episode like that. But anyway, I just want to take the time to do an episode about Hazel. You know, throw a little bit of love to Hazel. And, you know, um, I had been preparing this episode for the past couple of weeks. And I wanted to do some research on it before I got it together. My sister's not really familiar with Hazel. So I did this one on my own. And I wanted to do some extra research and, you know, make sure I had my facts together, although I might have gotten a couple of things mixed up or misconstrued. Again, my apologies. But I look forward to doing this for a while, and I'm glad that we I finally got the chance to get it done today. And that's going to pretty much wrap up this episode of Two Sisters and a TV, the classic TV podcast for all things classic TV. And again, as I said, Hazel... Definitely, you can check it out if you get Antenna TV, if you've never seen it before, or if you have not seen it in a long time, definitely rec- I recommend going over and checking it out. They are still in the George and Missy era. I believe that the episodes that they are showing are from around 1962-63. I think they're like in the second season, the latter part of it. But uh, yeah, definitely check it out and again i uh again like i said i believe the entire series is available on dvd that definitely is something you can buy on amazon or ebay and again um hazel i love the show and uh now that we've done this episode it's time for me to prepare to start preparing something for dinner because this talking about hazel has yes it's definitely made me hungry And on that note, I'm going to wrap up the episode. And again, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back with a brand new episode next week. And until that time, we'll see you all then.